Ron, you've hired dozens of bankers from SVB. You've got an eye towards building out that early stage growth business. You guys, despite what John was just saying, you guys, or James was just saying, you guys have been pretty proactive here. Well, of course. I mean, look, first of all, I'm not sure I agree completely with what was just said. You remember, Kelly, we had two banks fail out of 4,700 banks. Uh, the two were rather spectacular fails. And, of course, First Republic is having issues. But the issues are, are pretty well known. They got long fixed-rate securities and had a lot of uninsured deposits. And so let's just not, you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater. I, there are some things I think need to be done uh, with respect to some policy. But with, regarding Stiefel, look, uh, Silicon Valley's venture business was a very good business. That's not what got him in trouble. What got him in trouble was risk management on, on a mismatch. But uh, we're excited. We've hired a number of, you know, more than 20 uh, bankers. We've already been in the venture uh, banking business. It's highly, highly synergistic with our investment bank and our wealth management. So we see opportunity. All right. And with that said, what about the broader questions about profitability, you know, credit? So even if we just said, okay, is the deposit issue contained? And obviously, Stiefel's a little unique in that. You're not, you're not like one of those regional banks. But even if we said that issue's contained, what about the bigger picture? You know, what are earnings going to look like three, six, nine, 12 months out? Well, first of all, we are in a very unique situation with respect to this whole question of deposit cost. I mean, look, the the difference between the six month and the ten year is 150 basis points inverted. It, that is a that's a unique situation, and I think when we get back to a normal yield curve, there'll be less focus on this. I think the bigger issue, Kelly, though, is that. What this has done is it has hurt the confidence of the safety of deposits in the regional mid-sized banks. And that's where I think the issue is. And what that is, is there is no question in my mind that the playing field in banks is heavily tilted to the two big to fail banks. They have implicit deposit insurance. And I think what you saw was everyone said, oh, I got to move my money to a big bank. That needs to be dealt with because that is the bigger issue than what we're seeing today on upside down balance sheets. Sure. And I mean, again, this goes back to a question. Even yesterday, one of our uh, analysts was saying, you know, he's interested in, in owning them maybe too big to fail banks. So there's so much um, sort of gray area right now about what exactly kind of backstop we're talking about and where does it apply. And we all know the truth just depends on the kind of deposit flight we still may or may not see in the weeks and months to come. Well, no, what you look, look, the the local economies across the United States are based upon the midsize and regional and local banks. Those banks uh, and many of them are uh, the foundation, are business deposits. And, and those business deposits, by, by definition, are more than $250,000. And so we have to find a way. I'm not for government intervention ever, but the government has intervened because those deposits are viewed as essentially guaranteed at too big to fail banks and not so at regional mid-sized banks. That needs to be fixed. Otherwise, the next crisis is going to be even more of an emphasis on where should my deposit be. And those deposits need to stay in our local community banks. So you do think that business deposits or whatever people want to call them, commercial transactional deposits specifically, should have full FDIC backing? Is there any up to any number? I do. And I, and I think that I think so some of my big bank colleagues will probably get mad at me for saying this, but <laughs> they need to pay their fair share of the FDIC premium because today they don't have to pay because they have an implicit guarantee. So I absolutely do believe that business deposits need to be insured across the industry, and everyone should then compete for those deposits based on local dynamics, service, and competitive rates, not the fact that, oh, it's insured at a big bank and it's not insured here. It's interesting. Absolutely. Because, you know, we were just having a conversation about the government kind of needing to step in here, and, you know, I think... That the question is, in w even what you're saying, is, is kind of that they do need to make clear what the rules are, right? That no one's st saying, OK, step up here and provide, you know, unlimited bailouts. But what there seems to be a need for is for them to spell out the rules of engagement right now and in in which deposits are explicitly backed and which aren't. And until they do something even like that, it, it feels like there could still be problems. 
But, but Kelly, the government has intervened. Everyone believes that at the two big to fail banks, their deposits are insured. Look no further than Credit Suisse. That yeah. got resolved because Credit Suisse was too big to fail. And so government has intervened because the deposits are implicitly guaranteed. So they need to level the playing field with, and I say with respect to business deposits at mid-sized regional and community banks. They're safe anyway. They're, they're, I'm not saying they're not safe at these banks. They are. But when you get times of crises, then people question uh, the credit quality of a mid-sized versus a too big to fail. And that's just simply not fair. Yeah. Ron, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us today. Okay. Appreciate it very much. Ron Krzyzewski okay. is the CEO of Stiefel.